So people have the question about what are the sizes of those graphics for the cover image and such. In the notes, I put it there. It's going to be that link. But I will also put the graphics. It says here 170 by 170 pixels for the, uh, for the profile. So profile photo. Usually you're going to put your logo, so it's got to be a square of 170 by 170. And then for the cover, the wide graphic, it's going to be 820 by 312. It will resize itself to various sizes for various devices. Uh, cover photo. This one is uh, 820 by 312. Very briefly, I'll mention a free photo editing software. Pixlr.com. How many of you have heard of Photoshop before? Photoshop is big, famous software. It's been around maybe like 25 years now. Uh, and it's a it's photo software that lets you crop images, resize images, and uh, you know put your cat's face on your body. You know, cool stuff like that. So um, Photoshop, but it's not free. It's it's expensive. It costs money. Um, there are alternatives. Our computers nowadays, your Mac or your Windows, might have basic photo editing capabilities, rotate a photo, crop a photo, etc. But dedicated photo editing software is often better. And here's one that I recommend, Pixlr.com. This is an online free alternative to Photoshop. If you've used Photoshop, you will find it very familiar. It has the tools that Photoshop has of adding text to a picture, uh, cropping it so that you only see you know, your, your head. Maybe you took a full body shot, but you only want your head. You can crop that. You can rotate things if things are a little off kilter. You can add special effects like colors and filters and such. And it's free. You can, uh, you can use it on any computer, Windows or Mac. All you need is a web browser and an internet connection. So you go to the address there, you will see Pixlr. And there's another one I think called Pixlr Express. It's just a quicker, simpler version. And I bring that up because these profile photos and cover photos should be best as a certain dimensions. Uh, and they don't have it anymore. This was a great example that I used to show. Uh, and, um, you know, no, no booing, please, but um, I'm going to pull up the Chargers page. Uh, OK, there it is there. They still haven't changed it, actually. Um, that would be nice if it wasn't cropped. So if their photo was a nice square shape, it would not be cropped like that. Um, so this is what I'm saying. These, these graphics, they have a certain dimension. And if you make your graphics those dimensions, they should look nice. Uh, if we fully look at it, yeah, uh, I thought they would have fixed that by now. Now, their cover photo here looks cool. But their, um, their logo here, that would look much better if it was properly sized down to a square shape. They obviously have it as a rectangle shape. And it crops it, and it looks weird. Yes? Pixlr has a photo editing version for phones as well. So if you go to their website, Pixlr, uh, there's probably the button, download the app. Let me take a quick look. So mobile, right there. Yep, so there's a version of Pixlr for mobile devices. If you do it on the web app, there's a Chrome version. There it is, Pixlr Editor, Pixlr Omatic, Pixlr Express. They're all different ways to edit photos. But most likely, Pixlr Editor is the one people want. Now you need Flash also, which most browsers have. Then you have this online photo editor that you can use to size your graphics. Just, just sort of an FYI, if you're doing a lot of photos, you can get a photographer version from the Adobe of Lightroom and Photoshop. Hmm. Hmm. So you use Photoshop Lightroom, you know, $9.99 per month or so. Yeah, uh, Photoshop for a long time has been very, very expensive, and there's different tiers of it, and depending on your 
the version you get, you could get it for as little as nine ninety nine. I'd rather buy Netflix, but uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> Mm. Yes. You know when you create a, a website, you go through the domain, the every day and stuff, finding a fine one. Does it happen that when it comes to Facebook, you open a page for business that you can't get that same name somebody else? No, this one doesn't seem to have that issue. So when you're kind of browsing around to, to pick names, you should be able to get the name that, that you want. Um, and you probably won't have to explore very much to find the right name, and then you just pick it and you've got it. Can't you use the same name that you have on your Well, yes. If I, um, if I have victorsbakery.com, I would want to have facebook.com slash victorsbakery, which I, then I, you can do facebook.com slash victorsbakery.com. Um, it's just that you know your name that you get over at GoDaddy or whatever, Victor's Bakery dot com. See, not available. So someone on Facebook already got that name. I may have that name that I purchased on Bluehost or GoDaddy, but then I come to Facebook to get that name and someone took it. So I just have to settle for something else or be creative or do something else. Okay, so uh, let's uh, look at a few things that I think are important for um, for building followers. We definitely, of course, will we'll talk about posting and, and, and how to get followers, of course. We cover the same kind of idea many times on different networks. But um, what I often like to do, especially with Facebook, is to show some things that are important to know and maybe you don't have to do this very often but it's very useful which is settings when you uh, have your account here you have settings um, uh, one more thing actually uh, it's very easy to get away from your page you know if I click my name this goes to my personal page and I've got embarrassing stuff there so I'll go over here and then I go to home and I see my friends stuff uh, and so the um, the personal of, of home home takes me back to Victor's page my personal page with my friends stuff my friends and family well uh, it, again it's very easy to get away from your business page uh, we can get back to it you may see it appear on the left side here you may see it appear on the right side over here or definitely you'll also see it up on the triangle uh, in manage pages so if you kind of wander off and suddenly you're on your own personal stuff again, you need to remember to get back to your page. So here's a list of all my pages. Yes? You'll, you'll never get your uh, company up there on top where Victor would be up. Exactly. They used to. They used to have very easily identifiable you the person, you the business would show up right there not anymore so that's annoying the closest thing is that when I'm actually managing my business we'll see it here which is a search box which doesn't quite make sense but it used to be right there would say Victor's Bakery I'm managing Victor's Bakery whatever I'm gonna write you know whatever photo or video I'm about to share right here that's gonna be for my business you have to be sure you have to ignore that I'm gonna see my personal name here your business will show up here in search um, and now I'm managing my page. It's just hard to post to uh, people think they're posting the personal page instead of the business page, so they're kind of confusing. Or vice versa, people think I'm, I'm posting on, on, on one and I'm doing it on the other. You just have to pay attention basically at the top here, what, what am I looking at? And if you're still not sure, just definitely go here and then select your business here, or, or manage page and select the business. And you also have to be mindful who you're posting as. Well, that is kind of automatic a little bit more nowadays. Uh, who is the person posting on a page? But yeah, we'll, we'll look at that too because it could be easy, very easy to be posting as a person onto the business as opposed to the business onto the business. We'll, we'll see that. Before that, um, let's go here to the settings. Uh, if, you're on, if you're on your personal, you won't see settings. So again, uh, you need to be in the business and click settings 
There's a lot of settings. I'm not going to cover them all, just a, a few of them that I think are important. But there's a lot of things to look at here to, to the benefit of your business. Uh, for example, general, page visibility. My page is currently published, meaning everyone in the world could potentially see what I'm doing on my business page at the moment, even though I'm not fully setting it up yet, even though I make spelling mistakes. What you could do is go to uh, edit this and set it to unpublished, and then a lot of these have a little question. Publishing your page makes it visible. If you check unpublish, it will only be seen by people with a role on the page, meaning managers. If you put it on the unpublished, only you, the manager, and other people that you've assigned will be able to see it and edit it. Because this is a fake account I made up, I'm not going to bother. But if this was a real page that you eventually want people to see, it may be an idea to unpublish it, and then set it all up, and then publish it, ready to go. And that's easy to do there. Um, this was touched on in a previous week, and it'll it'll make more sense now. We'll say here, uh, Twitter is um, one of the most open platforms. Facebook is one of the most closed platforms. There's pros and cons to both of those statements, but we'll say it in terms of our business. We'll say it like this. Your message can get away from you on Twitter. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm going to explain that in one moment. Facebook is one of the most closed platforms, meaning you can control your message more. Getting away from you means I'm trying to do some community stuff and posting and using hashtags, and it gets away from me in terms of people co-opt it or change the conversation, or um, it gets into spam or harassment or whatever. Uh, here's examples that happen. Uh, a few years ago, uh, like you know, the, the New York Police Department, they were on Twitter, and they wanted to do some community outreach. Um, so uh, they went on Twitter and they said, you know, tell us about your New York Police stories and hashtag it NYPD, my NYPD. Uh, so then uh, people then started to co-opt it to show incidents of police brutality and police overreach and saying, my NYPD. <laughs> so it got away from them and that they were trying to do something positive and, you know, community outreach and, and, and all of that. It's very good and there should be a good relationship. But, you know, uh, it's not always that utopian. So uh, the message got away from them. They wanted to use a hashtag for a positive end and it didn't end up being positive. And the reason it can get away from you is you cannot affect 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 other people's tweets you cannot delete their tweet you cannot edit their tweet you cannot hide their tweet it's their tweet it's very public so they can write whatever they want and um, we can't really do anything about it uh, you know all that about slander and libel okay that's for the courts to decide and we're still trying to figure all of that out. Facebook, on the other hand, you can control your message. You can delete or edit other people's posts on your page. You have a forum that you give people to talk to you on your Facebook page by default. So you can post great photos and you can do the hashtag MyNYPD and all of that and you can do it on Facebook and if people then start to get out of hand, or mean, or off topic, or whatever, you can edit or delete their content on your page. So two big ways to do social media there. One very open and one closed. Just for the nature of running a successful business, I think Facebook does it better as a business. Because I want the positive stuff on my business. I want the on-topic stuff on my business. I mean, uh, I want it out there. On the sort of like, you know, concept of it and the free speech of it all, of it all in the dialogue, then the Twitter does it better. But of course you get the good with the bad when anyone can say anything. On Facebook you have the ability to curtail the message, to control the message, to shape the message. And you do that right here in settings. Visitor posts. Anyone can publish to my page. 
anyone can add photos and videos to my page. You can edit that to say, uh, no, don't let any crazy person write any crazy thing on my page. Don't let any mean person, don't let anyone write anything on my page. I want to keep the message only from what I say. Keep it on track. This is a, this is not so black and white, however, because even though we've got both of these approaches open and closed, we have also approaches to social media monologue dialogue. What's a monologue? One person talking. Root word mono, one, and logos, which I think means speech. Dialogue, dia, um, two or more. You can do social media as a monologue or as a dialogue. So in terms of social media, monologue, you talk at your followers. Dialogue, you talk with your followers. The difference there is I've got a Twitter account or a Facebook or whatever. This works on all networks. And I'm going to be posting stuff on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever. I'm going to be posting stuff. Every day I'm going to follow a schedule, posting great stuff. But I never reply to people. I never let them comment. I never acknowledge them. I never do community. I never do the social aspect of social media. A big company like McDonald's can afford to ignore the haters can afford to ignore the people that are writing terrible things on their page. Um, me as a small business, I can't. I have to deal with why are people harassing or mean or off topic or whatever. Um, well, I can't handle it. I gotta run my business. So I'm gonna go on Facebook and I'm gonna turn it into a monologue, which is this right here. No one can post anything. That's fine, that's not wrong, that's a way to do it. Because the opposite is the dialogue. You talk to people, people talk to you, reply. They talk about their own thing, it gets off topic. It's, it's a dialogue, it's open, which is the default of Twitter, which is the default of Facebook, actually, right there. Allow visitors to page to publish. So monologue, dialogue are two ways to run your social media. Allowing people to also talk and reply and all of that, or not. I would recommend as a social media marketer that has done this for years, dialogue. I would let other people comment and talk and reply and be social and get the ball rolling because you are most likely are not such of a big company that you can afford to ignore complaints and questions and all of that. You want to answer people. You want to appear that you're a small business, a real business. You're not some huge corporation in another state that has no interest in really engaging. Well, that sounds scary. That means any mean person, any crazy person will write whatever they want on my page? No, because then we have in the middle, allow visitors to post on my page, but review those posts before they become visible to people. And notice that is off by default. I would recommend using Facebook, leaving it on allow anyone to write anything they want, but it will not appear until you review it. So you could then be this gatekeeper that doesn't allow the negative stuff on your page, the off-topic stuff, the spam, and keep it on track. That is perfectly fine to do because it is your business, your property to the lengths of Facebook will give you. In the real world, you know, if a person comes up to my, uh, my doorstep and stops, starts yelling at me and berating me and obscenities and all of that, they are perfectly in their right for, in, in the terms of free, free speech to do that, but not on my property. Get off my property and yell at me on the sidewalk where that's public, where I will call the police. Same thing here. People can uh, write whatever mean and terrible things they want, but not on my property. Go off and make your own Facebook page and berate me there but not on my page. So don't worry about people saying, you're censoring me and free speech and all of that. 
It doesn't apply in this case because technically all of that is about governmental organizations or entities curtailing your free speech. This is a business entity where I run it how I want and if I only want all of the puppies and rainbows on my page, that's how I'll have it. If I want only the positivity on my page, that's how I'll have it. It's my business. If they want to trash me, do it on your own page. That's when then you can't control that. You can't delete what they're saying on their page. But on my page, because I recommend to use a dialogue, uh, set it to moderate, to approve. And I would, I would leave this one on, allow people to put photos and videos. We're such a multimedia culture nowadays that only letting people write text is not enough. If people want to share a great photo of the food, let them. If they want to make a video that's free advertising, let them. But you'll have the ability to monitor that. And on a different screen a little bit later, we'll see it's, uh, you're going you're gonna to be notified of it right there. Someone posted something, so then I go look at it and I say approve or deny, and then I keep the message on track. And that's, that's keeping it as a dialogue, and then also using the closed aspect to keep things on track. So recommendation, uh, leave Facebook setting for all to post on your page, but activate uh, moderation. Monitor and moderate and allow what goes in. Yes, it's an extra step. You're busy running your business, but Facebook, again, it's the biggest network out there, and uh, popularity breeds popularity, and if you get traffic from Facebook, and you get more traffic from Facebook, and you keep it positive, and you guide the conversation. Yes. People, like if I'm going to trash a business, I'm most likely going to go on my page and trash it. Me as the business owner, she ain't doing anything about that. I mean, do, do people really go to the business's page to try to trash it there? It happens, yeah. Uh, I don't think for most of us smaller companies it's a big deal, but it could. There's actually an example of this. This is, this is again, like the underside, the underbelly of all of this. Uh, one of my hobbies uh, is, uh, is I play Magic, which is a card game. And there's various comic shops and card shops around San Diego. Uh, there was one that I liked to go to down in Chula Vista. Um, so that, that business on Main Street they chose to run their business a certain way. People that also played the game that were in other states said, well, we don't like how you're doing it. So from people from other states went onto their Facebook to trash them. So suddenly their, their, their dialogue and their, their ratings went from 4.5 stars to like 2.3 stars because someone else from some other states and, you know, mobilized their friends and all of that and they trashed them and they hurt them. But Facebook is better at kind of weeding that out to some degree about uh, well why did suddenly everyone you know in, in the span of one day why did they suddenly get one star reviews and why is everyone from an out of state doing it so you know it hurt them for a moment but then those ratings and such were erased because they were obviously fake they were they were instigated and they and they were agitating and they were not relevant so um, people can do it I have seen it but uh, it's pretty rare uh, and I wouldn't let that kind of dissuade me. So do you think Facebook pays more attention to the business pages? Because that's the exactly. Of that kind of a situation. Exactly. Uh, you know, ultimately, behind the scenes of all of this, Facebook's a business. They're trying to make money, and they are making money. And they make money off of businesses, not people. And so they want to keep businesses as happy as possible to stay on Facebook, to get traffic and viewers and ads and all of that. So they do help out the businesses. And there is a whole help system right here that you get that uh, regular people don't get. So under help here you will be able to actually contact real people in Facebook and I've done it and they've resolved the issues. For a person it's like well look at this page and you might get an answer. But for a business because they make money off of us they do answer. No they're about the same and we'll, we'll look at them both. Let's see other things here. You can look at these on your own. Let's see, fee messages, country. Okay, we've got some restrictions here. You could do this that might be useful under country restrictions. Anyone in the world can view your page. 
maybe your business focuses only in in a, in an audience in England so I would only show this page to viewers in these countries so only only the UK can see my business that might be useful for some of you most of you not necessary I want everyone to see it you don't really have to put US only if you're in San Diego but that's something that might be useful the opposite is hide don't show this page to certain countries maybe you have you know an alcohol business and you can't sell alcohol in certain countries so you hide yourself from that country you've got age restrictions as well who can see this we've got some there is this alcohol related then it'll set itself properly 21 and up etc technically you have to be at least 13 year old 13 years old to use Facebook so if you know anyone that's under 13 using Facebook can't do that I'm gonna tell on you you shouldn't use Facebook if they're if you're that young um, page moderation profanity filter so other things you can just go here to um, to improve your page and here's another one post in multiple languages at the moment this is off um, I set this up because I already had it set up at, in English so everything I post here will be in English if I want to I can turn on this feature and when I post when I share something I can put it in multiple languages it will not automatically translate itself to other languages I have to write a version in another language so if my main audience is in English and Japanese turning that on will allow me to write something in English and Japanese to reach more of an audience Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not here, it's on a per post basis. Now they have a new one here actually, now that I see translate automatically. Your post may show translate automatically for people who read other languages. And you can turn that on or off. It's on by default, that's good. So it could then auto translate itself. But we know that these machine translated things are not always perfect. They get the pronouns wrong or the order of the language. So you still have the ability for yourself to uh, write this properly. And here, uh, down at the bottom, you delete your page. So if this is just a test account, uh, this is where you would go to delete this just for practice. Or if you then decide, uh, actually, after learning about Instagram, I'm going to move over to Instagram. I don't want Facebook. You can delete it here. Yes. Um, that's normal. It, it depends on the way that you created your um, your page. If you created it with a um, with a location, it's going to want to verify. I would just kind of ignore it for the moment, but that's a way again to to show legitimacy about who created this page, uh, especially if it's a physical location. Let's see other things to look at. Uh, let's jump over here under under edit page on the left we have a basic amount of editing that we could do design wise everyone's Facebook is that blue color and everyone has that graphic at the top it could be a different graphic but everyone has the same sort of template if you'd like you can go to edit page and rearrange some aspects of the tabs these tabs here are what people will see and, and, and in this order. Remember how we had events. Let me go back again over, uh, I mean about. We had uh, about, a person visits my page right now and they'll see something like this and they'll see right away posts and reviews. They would have to click see more to see this other stuff. These are these tabs that it's talking about. If you want to change the order of these things, maybe my about or my videos are more relevant for people to see right away, that's what I can do on this screen right here they've got the default tabs I want um, shop to be first or I want uh, right away people to see all my videos or events so I think it shows two maybe three things first and then view more so then you can see more and they started to add something new here that I need to educate myself on a little bit more they've got a, a brand new uh, shop feature where you can start to add your products 
So now they're really encroaching on things like, I've got a shopping cart on my website. Well, Facebook now is allowing you to start to set up a way to do shopping cart on your Facebook. And I need to educate myself more on it. I need to read the documentation and try it out. Right now, our clients still have their shopping carts and stuff on their websites. But I need to take the time to read how shopping works on Facebook. People tell me it's pretty straightforward. But uh, I want to learn myself. <clears throat> post attribution. This is what came up earlier about you have to be careful who you're posting as. The default should be the person, this is right here, your posts and likes and comments on this page's timeline will be attributed to the page by default or as Victor Campos. So the default should be that you're posting and commenting and being active as your business. If you want to then turn it so that I'm being active on this page as Victor, I can turn that on, and most of us don't want this. The default is fine. Page roles, very important screen here. Page roles. Uh, everyone who works on your page can have a different role depending on what they need to work on assign a new role or who are the existing ones. Right now, existing is only myself. From my personal account, I created this page. I am the administrator of this. I have full control of every aspect of the page. I can assign new people. They, of course, already need a Facebook account before getting to do anything here. So if I'm trying to give access to someone else that doesn't have Facebook, They'll have to create a Facebook account first with their own password and email, and then they'll be able to manage this page. We have roles. The default is editor. An editor can send messages to customers, publish pictures, videos, whatever, respond to and delete comments, create ads, see which admin uh, activated, and so forth. There's a level below that, moderator can send messages to the customers, but it removes a little bit of the features. And as you go down the list, these people can do less and less. So the opposite is admin. And it gives you a warning. If you're adding a new admin to your page, please keep in mind that they'll have the same permissions and power as you to make changes. In theory, worst case scenario, I added the three other people that, that work in my business as admins. One of them gets fired and is very mad at me. They log in and delete me from my own page. Worst case scenario. If you give other people admin access, it's the most powerful of all. They can do everything in these screens, include add or remove people from an account. That's why the default is the second most powerful level, which lets them do everything except adding and removing people from the account. So if you're going to add your business partner as also an admin on Facebook, hopefully you've got good contracts that uh, shows the business relationship. And nowadays we need to put stuff like this in contracts about, you know, you will not kick me out of my own page. So instead of having that liability, you have the default of editor. Yeah. Under settings, then you can go to page roles on the left. So very important screen here, who has managed, who has access to the page, and more people you want to add. For my notes here, I'll say regarding page roles, only add the most trusted people as an admin. The editor role should be fine for everyone else. They will have the ability to post photos and video and reply to customers and delete off-topic stuff and do everything except the powerful stuff of deleting the page. That's another thing, worst case scenario. You just fired someone, they're an admin, they log into this thing, they go to settings, and they click delete page. And it doesn't delete it right away, I think you've got a grace period of two weeks. But 
they could really cause trouble. So only the most trusted people. Um, since we've worked with these clients for a while before they added some of these other roles, we're probably admin on all of them because we're grandfathered in with the old settings. But if we take on any new clients, um, we're nice people. We'll, we'll be admins, but we'll take editor, sure. Exactly. Everything that we would need to do for the for the customer, yeah, we can do it via editor. Exactly. Let me see. Okay, here's a good one to look at. Uh, preferred page audience. Um, it used to be when I taught this class a few months ago, um, there was this screen here, preferred page audience, which. Uh, when you created the account, people would see this, and now they seem to have removed it. Uh, there was a, a screen where you could say, this is my target audience. I'm looking for men of this age, women of this age, in this location. That was my preferred audience. Who am I actually trying to target in my business? And it still has, it still has this button here, and they should remove it because then now it says, to simplify, we've moved this. Um, you can still add all of this stuff uh, on, that other, on that other screen. You can still add or edit country or age restrictions. Uh, so there used to be this way that you can target uh, the audience uh, who wants to see this. They've removed it now. They've integrated it with this other system of boosting a post, which we're about to get to very soon. Uh, but this is answering the question uh, before about, well, can I have certain people look at my content and reach the right audience? Yes. Uh, we're going to see how to target the right people very soon. These other settings, you can look at them on your own. Um, Instagram, if you didn't know by now. Facebook owns Instagram. Uh, it used to be a little independent company, and uh, they were getting uh, they were getting some buzz and such. And then Facebook bought them, and uh, I I got on uh, I got on Facebook week one when it when it published. So you know, I'm pulling out my my hipster cred. I was on on, on Instagram before you, uh, and back in my day, it was only on uh, it was only on iPhones. And then eventually it went on Android, and it got really popular. And then Facebook bought them. And then a lot of us thought, okay, there, there goes the neighborhood. Uh, Facebook bought Instagram. They're going to mess it up, just like they messed up Facebook. Um, but they actually left it, alone, left it alone for a long time, until very recently. And then now they're integrating Facebook and Instagram a lot. And when we, if you come back for the day when we cover Instagram, which should be in two weeks, uh, we'll, we'll cover all aspects of Instagram. But now Instagram and Facebook are integrated. And there's a lot of good synergy there that we can look at its value. So again, you can look at these settings on your own, and you can ask specifically during breaks and such about specific things, but you can look at them on your own. There's also a little help screen to get help. Uh, and then there is something here uh, of payments, which uh, again, we'll cover that very soon, but there is a whole payment system here. Yes? Is there a, a limit to how many items will come up first before you have to hit the more button? I can see what a lot of people just look at what they have and not make the effort to hit the more button. So if there's a limit, uh, we would certainly want to, or you try to choose, you try to choose, but you're going to put up first. This one right here, right? Yeah. Exactly. I believe it is two, well, three. Home is always there, and then two items. So yes, you would want to prioritize. Three. Well, it's three because home is a button too. If I'm in shop, there will always be home. So there's two that we can change. So yeah, prioritize the two most important things here under your tabs. And then, yeah, people may never go to see more, so put the two most important ones there. OK, let's, uh, regarding payments, um, you can accept payments uh, if people buy your stuff. And then also you can use payments, as we'll get to in a moment, regarding their ad system. We'll do that in one moment. Uh, question? I see this in our, the PayPal is almost the same. Is there a difference? 
PayPal has been around longer and is more famous. Stripe is a little bit more up and coming. Um, I haven't used Stripe enough to really tell you the big differences, but it's two ways to uh, uh, accept, uh, collect payments. It's just two different ways, and they charge their own fees. There's always some sort of fee charged when we deal with transferring money. So um, you can read that up, up on your own. I need to educate myself a little more on Stripe, but I keep hearing it's up and coming and, and pretty good. Probably. It might be a little confusing because when people need to pay, you've got those options, and I've never heard of Stripe, so I don't know what it is. So you can probably put both, but it might just be easier to have one to make it the whole process easier. Uh, the, the common misconception with PayPal is that you need a PayPal account, but no, actually PayPal has it set up. You can use any credit or debit card um, to pay through PayPal. You don't need a PayPal account, but PayPal is the middleman that transfers the money, but a person doesn't need to have an account. They can just use any credit or debit card, and Stripe is just the same, but it's another company. A business owner doesn't want to pay extra for those companies just directly from their trust account. Nope. There's always a middleman when it comes to transferring money. Even if we might not see it, it's in there somewhere. When we're over on Target and we're paying with our credit card, Target is being charged by American Express to do the transfer. We never see it. Target eats the, eats the, the cost. We never see it. This is why Costco broke a relationship with American Express. You used to be able to pay at Costco with American Express, and now it's Visa. Well, they didn't want to pay their fees anymore or whatever, and Visa gave them a better deal, so now you can only pay with Visa at Costco. Because behind the scenes, Costco is paying Visa to be able to transfer money. Let's, uh, from here, let's go to page. This takes you back to the home screen of your, of your business. And um, if you scroll down a little bit, there may be like some to-do lists or tips for you to do. I would do these. This is basically what I've been talking about, of adding cover photos and your descriptions and such. When you've accomplished them all, these, these go away. And then there's down here, similar to like a personal profile, you can post or share stuff. Status, photo or video, live video, events and products, different things here polls, notes, etc. So we have different things that we can share. And as I've said before, I don't exactly like teach in these classes, make sure you, you post this thing. Um, because every business is different. If I say, make sure you make a poll every Monday, well, that might work well for, you know, a band page, but it doesn't work well for my lawyer's page. I might say, make sure you do live video every Saturday. Well, that works well for my bakery because I'm showing tasty treats, but it doesn't work well for my real estate business. So the actual things to post, I, I don't exactly teach that. Remember I mentioned instead uh, to get a lot of ideas and inspiration of exactly what to post from socialmediaexaminer.com. <coughs> There is a certain amount that I can teach in a class of like 25 people that each has their own goals. During the breaks, of course, I can talk individually. But I really like this site that I've mentioned before, uh, where you go there and it'll tell you top five tips to use Facebook if you're a realtor. Or it'll say how to use YouTube to get more phone calls to your business. So I think that's a lot better to go to a sort of a trade journal website to get actual concrete ideas of what to share on all the networks than trying to teach as I've done as I've tried in the past to a whole class because everyone has their own goals and people are sitting there twiddling their thumbs it doesn't apply to me I don't care so you want to look at it there on your own to figure out what works best for you what I will cover then is okay how to take the one step beyond let's say you have an idea you're gonna post some photos or videos or questions or polls or whatever um, what still applies here what I mentioned previously go back to the other notes but very briefly ideas generic ideas remember open-ended questions 
if you simply post a photo of, uh, of your cupcake that you're selling and that's it, okay, that's nice, nice photo, but what else? What about asking a question about it? Uh, what about trying to do a dialogue? Open-ended questions. Put the social in social media. You can't be social with that TV commercial. It's going to blare out at you, and then you care or you don't. You pay attention or you don't. Social media, it's commercials. It's our commercials. It's our ads. It's our marketing. But we have the ability then to ask a question, get the ball rolling, conversation, build community. And that's going to be perhaps more effective because then someone sees you as a real company, as a real person, and then they actually do buy or call you or click a link or whatever. Ideas. Add well shot photos and links to the product. Well shot is subjective, but the opposite of well shot is a photo that is too dark, that the that the that the thing is blurry, that your your photo is like tilted in a weird way that makes it look like it's gonna fall over. That of course is also hard to teach, but get the examples of competition. Look at what others are doing to see what you could do. I'm a bakery. I'm gonna search on Facebook over here. I'm just gonna type bakery. Show me all bakeries in Facebook. And then, okay, Incredible Cheesecake Company, Black Market Bakery, Cake Monkey Bakery, Porto's Bakery. They don't have to be competitors exactly in the same city. Any competitor of any business that is related to your business, try that. Search a keyword and then look at one. I would look at Porto's Bakery. And, okay, 773 reviews, people commenting. Um, do they have any photos? No photos. That's interesting. Uh, let's see another one. Uh, um, it's the same. I think it's just as it goes from screen to screen, some shows more or less. I think it also depends the kind of page. I see here photos, community and such, but not events or and, and such. I think when they created it and they had the option to choose local business, brand, etc., you, you get different options. Options that are relevant for your type of business. Black Market Bakery has their logo. It has a photo up here, handmade, all butter croissants. More photos here. They've got a photo there showing their hours of operation. So you just look at the competition. What kind of photos do they have as an inspiration? They will not get any notification that says Victor's Bakery is looking at your page. That's not true. They will get a notification if I click like. Now they got the notification that said, Victor's Bakery liked your post. And then they can go check you out or reconnaissance or whatever. So just by looking at another's account, they're not going to be notified of that. So this is, this is reconnaissance. This is competitor analysis. Ideas. Search. Keywords of other accounts. Uh, no, uh, search keywords of your niche, your business, and look at other accounts to get ideas for your own posting, also known as competitor analysis. Or reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. Recon. Reconnaissance. So you're checking out other other people's pages. Yeah. Is there a way to determine if those four point five thousand likes are real likes or just fake likes? Oh, that's a good point. It is easy for someone to go off and buy likes and buy followers and all of that. The problem is, in one sense, it doesn't matter, and in the other, it's very important. Meaning, for me, it doesn't matter that they've got 4,000 likes. It's their business. I have, uh, I have known companies that have paid to buy 2,000 likes. But the reason that it doesn't matter is, you're not going to make 2,000 sales. And you're not going to, even out of that 1%, make, you know, 20 sales. They wasted their money. They paid for all of those likes, and it just looks amazing that they've got five stars, but no one is actually buying anything. 
So it's a waste of money to, to pay to get likes and all of that. Uh, I would say, to be a little skeptical, it's okay to say half of them are fake. So okay, only 2,000 are real. Well, that's still 2,000 that are probably real. Okay, even more conservative, a quarter of that. Okay, only 1,000 are real. That's still, that's still enough that are real. Who cares about likes? The actual reviews. 38 reviews but 4,000 likes. Why don't they have like seven, you know, why don't they have like 700 reviews? So again, these might all be fake. Doesn't matter. What matters a little bit more is the reviews. Take half of that. Maybe they did pay for some amount of reviews. Take half of that. That's 40, 20 real reviews. That's pretty legitimate. A quarter of that, 10 reviews. Okay, getting a little low. So the more a business has more reviews, you can discount more of them and they are they are real. So you can't really tell who's fake, but I would be skeptical and it's okay. And if you take half of them, I would believe that half of them are true. For ourselves, we will we will be able to see on our own page the accounts and such. And this is something that happens on all the networks. Yeah, I've got ten thousand followers. No, I've got 10 followers on Twitter, and, and my competitor has 10,000. Well, they paid for them, but who cares? They wasted their money. No one, none of those fake accounts are really going to buy anything. It just has an amazing number. I've got 10,000 followers. 10,000, 1% uh, of zero, because they're all fake, is zero. So they're not selling anything. Let's take one more quick break and then we will talk about if we've got the idea of what we're posting and I got cool pictures and great products and no one's paying attention, well, we'll cover the next thing about how to get that attention right after the break. It's 10 or it's 11.50-ish. We'll be back at uh, 12 and then we'll go on. I'll show you the one secret of Facebook.